Hi everyone, it's a beautiful sunny day here. As you can tell, I haven't talked much this morning. <laughs> I don't do this on purpose, it'll, it'll, I'll normalize here soon. Getting ready to start this job. I might go get some tools on it today, but today is the big, the big barn door project coming up here. So I've got to, I don't know if I'm going to be allowed to film this, uh, and if so, the video will not exist, uh, but I hope that I can. I have to ask permission because I've been hired to hang this thing up. I will be making the door from scratch. I will not be getting one of those kits. It's so windy here, it always blows my recycling lids over. So uh, I forget what kind of kit this is. Got it at Lowe's and... Uh, Barn door, barn door. It has the soft close uh, features. I've already heard that this they don't want to use this handle. And so, I don't know. There's all the hardware. I just sort of, uh, Sean's uh, unhappy uh, nut selection. So anyway, there's the bar. i got to go get a 1 by 6 by 8 and cut it to, I think it's 78 and 5 8 inches. And I'm going to go ahead and hang everything up so I can get the proper length of the door. And that means I'll be able to make the door down there. Well, yeah, it's still Christmas. And uh, I'll be able to hang, I'll be able to make the door here. And the door is going to be kind of fancy. So uh, be a lot of biscuit joinery and stuff. This could end up being a long thing if I am allowed uh, to film uh, the hanging of it. Uh, there's a special problem that you'll see. This is going to, this is kind of a smallish house. And if a lot of you know, uh, doors take up a lot of room. Uh, and this, uh, there's a laundry room there and there's a door and it's right in the middle of the room. And it just, uh, it's better without the door. Uh, so thus a barn door. But it has above the uh, door frame is a large opening uh, with a screen in front of it that you'll, you'll see coming up. And that sort of complicates this matter a little bit. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Let's uh, let's see what happens here. So this is what this is. The Reliabilt Model 07-2892. So let me show you what we're doing here. And uh, even me, I'll be thanked. So this is what we have as a problem is uh, this pass-through vent from the laundry room. So I've got this uh, three-quarter by five and a half by eight. Let's just be honest about it. It's not a one by six. So the barn door is going to go here and then go this way, of course, because there's a wall there. So you don't have a choice. So I am going to tack up this board uh, with a... Uh, some type of drywall screw above that door and run the board from upper casement to upper casement. And then I can sort of get an idea on what we're going to do on the length of the barn door to the floor. And then uh, this is actually fouling. I'll have, to, I'll have to rip this probably a quarter of an inch to get it to go. Uh, I probably could mark it and get the router, but it would look funny, I think, to have an inset. I mean, I can, do anything. I can do anything I want to do, but I just think that would look kind of crazy. So let's get this tacked up there. And always remember, if if, if you have to uh, uh, shorten the board, try to shorten the board with the, with the gluey, sticky thing on it, because the stain never works on that. It's one of the drawbacks of that. But you can always stain the other side if that's the uh, if that's the A side. All right, all right. You don't want to honky can't because that's the B side. So it's precariously perched there on and I have one little screw in right here and so now I can do my marking and I'm going to go get the iron bars and I'm going to mark them and uh, use a pencil like this be sure and sharpen both ends so you know don't use anything too heavy because you'll be staining it so this is relatively dangerous and that thing there ain't helping any so I think we're okay to just do some preliminary markings. So the hard, let me get the hardware in here and I'll put it on this car. I'm not going to walk under that door. 
and then we'll uh, put it on some carpet and I'll show you what we're going to do and try to get the length of the door figured out. Then all will be well. All right, I'm marked here. I've got the, where I think the end is going to be of the uh, iron, the, the one, the first stick of iron. And then I have the center place. I messed up a little bit, but right here. And then I got the other end down there. I got a pulley ready. I've got this ready to help minus off whatever we're going to get there. So let's uh, let's just keep this here. So now we've got to sort out sort out what the thick, how deep this this wheel is. And this wall is a flipping mess, so I'm not worried about messing it up. So, the pulley is going to ride right about, right about there. So, and I'm just sort of going to eyeball it. Because I'm going to make the door probably a little longer than it needs. So I, I can, I can cut it down a little bit if need be. So then you kind of figure out, uh, where you want the wood to come up to here, you know, how high up is that going to be? So I'm going to sort all that out. Let me mark this on the wall and then I'll show you what I come up with here. Uh, the people that live here are real mean to me, so that's okay. I'll just charge them extra. So I didn't realize there was as much forgiveness here as because of the length between like right here and right here so what i've done is oops just about lost my example piece there okay so the pulley's going to ride right here okay and so halfway between this acorn nut and the bottom of the pulley is right here And then I went ahead and I, I'm, this is what goes on the floor, but I just subtracted it from right there. So this is going to be, uh, the, I'm just use this is strictly for measurement purposes. The door is going to come to here, but uh, this is strictly just for, for measuring. So uh, what I'm going to do is, I got this thing and I can just do it right here. We're going to put you at the top of the ladder. I'm going to go down to the floor. This, this tape measure locks just so great. So it's longer than I thought it was going to be. I was thinking it was going to be 84 to start with. That wouldn't even get you to the top of the casement. And then that means that you would see it when you close the door. You don't want that. So it looks to me like we're at 85. 85 and a half would be probably be just fine. So 85 and a half. And that, uh, so when you go up to here, you'll have the room on the floor for the guide. And uh, this kind of floor, we'll talk about that later. But, oh, uh, I am not going to drill into this floor. This is some kind of that composite stuff that, you know, looks like wood's hell to get in, snap it in on. You know what I'm talking about. So, uh, probably just going to glue those down since they're just guides, and they're going to probably go against the, the, uh, the shoe molding down there. So that'll be nice. Okay, that's it for this particular segment. Uh, so let's uh, get all our stuff back together and get this board down because it's kind of dangerously balanced up there. So the one thing I've learned about this thing is that that wants to go in there a particular way. So uh, now uh, we know that, that I've got to take about this much off. So we're going to do that. That's another project. I think it's all done now. Uh, keep it there. Oh, I gotta look for. Uh, 
Where is that thing? There it is. Okay, at least I know where it is now. Yeah, okay. So let's rip this down. <clears throat> and uh, I think I can aim it that way and get enough room to load it. And I found that this cart makes a good receiver, but I don't think I need it right now. So let's take a little bit off this and then I can find my center line and then I can cut this. <clears throat> Try to look at your ends and cut the, the parts that look weird so when you stain it, it won't look weird. <laughs> okay, let's see, what have I got here? I got stuff everywhere, I got notes all over the place. Okay. Okay, ripped it down, so that's a nice little scrap for something to use later. I didn't have the blade very high, that's why you see that ribbon there. Should have had it up a little higher, but that's okay. Uh, so that was my rip cut right there. And uh, I have done something to my camera, I don't know what. Oh dang, gum is saying. If you don't hold it perfectly, dang, it's just way too complicated for me. Okay, well, let's get to center point here and then uh, we'll put those metal things on there and we'll sort this out. So I'm not gonna need this blade. I tell you the truth, whenever I don't use this thing, I'll just crank her on down. All right. Okay, I found my center line somewhere around two and a half inches, right about here. So I got this laid out. I got that about where I want it. I, I sharpened this to give me a little bit more of a Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer look on it. And marked all five of these holes. I like that that goes in there because that, that hole makes it very stable there and there. So now I gotta cut this end off. And my guess would be, I don't wanna guess, let's make an end on this thing. Okay. And then probably, I'm gonna say right about here. Let's say right about there. And then we'll get rid of that a little bit and then we'll uh i'll go ahead and put some hardware in here and I'll get it uh get it stable and then uh, oh i got to do a fancy cut on this i forgot i'm gonna bevel this end a little bit so that's that's a real fancy cut so you got to go up and over i'll show you in a minute so i cut off that ugly end i got my blade up and tilted and so what I generally do in this case I don't do I haven't done too many of these but you can see where I'm going with this and you just push that against there now that'll give you uh, a place to start and there's my lines that you know both sides of the piece of iron and so now I'm just gonna buck that over a little bit and relieve this end give it a bevel you know a kind of a dun 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 and then you'll see the, uh, hopefully the uh, iron bar will be somewhat close to the, the bevel line. So it might take a couple of passes. This is not particularly safe. So uh, just do a little bit at a time. Let's see how it turns out. So I stopped in the middle to show you. There's no reason for you to have to hear all the noise and everything. So you end up with this little bit of a bevel. So I'm gonna do both sides and then I'm gonna, you can see maybe right here if I can get it to, see that little bit of a bevel, isn't that pretty? So we're gonna do that. We, we can go all the way up to about here. So I'm gonna make this cut, make a relief and then I'm gonna do like another kerf, just a little bit of a smidgen, a skosh. So I've gotta get this real stable before I crank it back up again, but I wanted to see wanted you to see what you got here so uh, this isn't woodworking 101 but it also you know pretty doable you know just just bite it off a little bit at a time okay see what I got here now uh, well, maybe you can yeah I just got that little bit of a bevel going right here and right there so let's uh first thing you do is get your hand out of the lariat there okay 
you straighten up your blade, especially if you've only tilted it a little bit so you won't forget and mess up your next project. And then get her down. Okay, and then you take out your fence. And then you kind of look at what you got here. Yeah, that's going to be nice. Got a little bit of a kerf right there and there. So now it's time to get the old sanding block and uh, kind of soften those a little bit. Now remember, this is a barn door. It's supposed to be a little rustic. It does not have to be perfect. So let me go get my sandpaper block and relieve those edges. I'm not going to get the router table out for this. Let's, that ought to be fine right there. Okay. Let's see what I end up with here. Okay, I guess there'll be a top and a bottom depending on whoever's taste it is. You'll find a couple little kerf marks, saw blade marks, and just round all the edges off. Do that for two reasons. One is it just looks a little bit more shop worn threadbare, and the other reason is it keeps you from getting splinters. So just round off everything. And then uh, always keep your air compressor handy. Psst. And the air compressor, come on, what do you know? What a shock, huh? Okay, uh, got all the hardware laid out. I'm going to set this up, uh, you know, and then I'll adjust it later, but... Uh, so I got my drill bits, my drill. These are the things that engage the soft clothes, spacers, stops, uh, drywall stuff, which I don't recommend you do unless you just absolutely have to. Uh, and uh, let's see, stops here, floor guides. Okay, so this is all the hardware. So I've got this laid out where I want it. And don't worry about those pencil marks, because when you stain it, those, those will go away. You can sand them out if you feel like it. So let's get her, uh, I got my little dots right there. So right about there. So I'm going to put those screws in there. Okay, got my dots lined up inside the holes there. So let's just take a gander there. And here, I'm going to push it down just a touch. Okay, so that looks like it. So let's drill some holes and see what we got here, okay? I'll tell you a trick that I use uh, when I drill, try to drill something straight. I hit it kind of at an angle and get it started and then come up. And generally, as you can see, you'll end up pretty, pretty straight in the hole. And that, you know, little things like that matter. Just blow this off and uh, put the spacers in and do this thing. Uh, well, this is funny. See that dude there? Let's see if it's one of those things. He came to look at my initials when I cut him in the field. He hovered around. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right. I'm going to have to keep up with that idea until they plant corn or something. And that was. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Well, let's get back to this thing. I don't know what possessed me to do that. I was just out there riding around picking up trash and hit my hit me. Okay, so we are getting pretty well done here. Now I'm just putting this stuff on here to to have it here. So that's the stop, and it goes this way. And then here are your uh, your soft closed little deals right here. So then you got. Oh, I think I put them in here already. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, I did. Let's get one out. This goes, this is what goes on the, on the top of the door. So you got to get the door height just right. So uh, I might cut this, I don't know, I'm going to take this with me to the, uh, there you go. So that goes like that. So your door, well, let's see if I can imagine a door here uh, with a piece of wood. There was a big hunk of wood I had, there it is. Let's just use this as a mock door. So there's your mock door. And this this would bolt on 
this way and then so when you close your door it's going to go that's the instructions aren't very clear on this so there's that piece goes on top of the door and i guess you could shim it if you wanted to so your door height is pretty well determined it's going to be right about there right about here so i'm going to take i'm going to take this with me too so just to make sure it works so when you hit this thing uh, it'll grab this thing and pull it to your soft clothes. This is, uh, you got a right and a left, of course, and you have to kind of set them up, you know, when you put these, when you put these brackets on there right there. So there you go. And uh, it's pretty, uh, it's, it's pretty intense work. <laughs> uh, it's okay, you know, it's okay for me, but you can see right here, they do kind of show it, but that's what that does. So uh, be sure and take you some nut drivers. Uh, we're not going to use that handle. And then uh, all these little bits of hardware help. Now, one of the things that I'm going to do is I got some, see, see those screws right there? No, just say no. I got, yeah, those screws right there, gold ones. Uh, those are those are mine. Those are uh, because what I'm gonna what it, what you got to do here is you got when you drill these holes, these will help hold it up. And then there's some plugs if you want to use them too. But uh, so there you go. Uh, so th once this thing gets stained, I can hang it, and then uh, I'm just gonna have to remember. You got to remember where your door height is. Okay. So you can use that actuator. So just gonna have to mark that somehow. Just mark it with a pencil. If you mark it with your carpenter pencil, you I don't want to do that, but you know you, you can you can see it if you need to see it and others can't. They they won't ever notice it. So got door stops on, got the soft clothes on, I got the spacers in and the fat side goes toward the wood. I got my bevel piece of wood here. And so I'm running out of parts, and that's always a good thing. So uh, it's not exactly intuitive, but it's also not exactly too difficult either. So I'm, I'm figuring on 85 and a half on door length. Uh, I don't know. Your results will vary, you know, as they say. And uh, so uh, Sean just called, and uh, going to put a flathead in a Harley somewhere with Tommy or something so uh, anyway let's uh, get this in the car I think I can get it in the front seat of the car and then we'll uh, take it to the uh, to the job site and uh, see how it goes later okay that's about the most setup I can do here it took a lot longer than I thought it's not even noon yet but it just took longer than I thought I'm trying to just sort everything out you know how it is Okay, back at the job site, I've got my board ready to hang up here using these two things and a, uh, and a nail. We're gonna put all the nails over here. So a little nail and hammer. So I'm going to uh, put a screw in this and sort of hang it up there and get it level. And then uh, I'll put my screws in the sides. Now I'm gonna be using these four screws and possibly if I need them this just to hang the board up there to get everything you know, situated the way I want it so here's all my hardware laid out ready to go all right so I'm going to I can do this from the floor so I got my board up there with just one screw holding it and I'm figuring about right here will be the end of the run I'm just kind of guessing. So let's mark this. Uh, I'll, I'll need a hammer to do this. So I'm going to use this nail and go in there and mark these. And then uh, I'll be able to place, see what's behind their wood or using those drywall things. This is just a preliminary hold it up there thing. Because of course I have to be stained. So the only place I hit wood was on this one here. And then I had to do the drywall screw things there. And uh, so let's hang this up. And uh, I'll hammer through these uh, five holes to see what's, what's back there. And I'll mark those on the wall. Uh, and then we'll worry about 
uh, if we use these or not. I hope not. I might recommend that a person go get uh, something a little bit more substantial. Those big anchor bolts, if you can get it to fit in there. All right, so what what we got here is it's up and it's stable, but I hit nothing but drywall on all five screws. So I'm going to try to make a come up with some better anchor. I think it's okay though. Uh, I can't recommend gluing it up with Gorilla Glue because it's just going to tear the hell out of it taking it down. Uh, you know, in whatever year that happens from now. So uh, here's where the door's going to stop, and I can adjust that a little tiny bit. So I can bring it right to the end and it won't look stupid and it'll, it'll have enough to clamp onto here. And that's adjustable later. So now what we got to do is uh, go get the hanger. I mean the, uh, with the wheel thing and measure from that. So that measurement I took earlier uh, probably is, is not standing. I don't think I'll edit that out. It's just a mistake. And you can just don't make that. Don't, you know, don't do like me. You just do it like this. So I'll have to come up with some kind of anchor system back there. I, I just can't get, I can't get happy with these things. So anyway, let's go get the wheels. Okay, it's quite amazing what happened here. Okay, I'm getting there, don't worry. Whoa. So from the floor, to my mark is exactly 85 and a half. And that ought to, okay, so now what you do, okay, 85 and a half, I hope it just don't make a lot of noise. They do it hook me. How come they always hook when you don't want them to and you can't get them? To? So you got 85 and a half, and then you subtract whatever your floor guide is, which I don't have my micrometer here, but I hope you both swing this. So it's uh, that's about three sixteenths. So if I was if I was somebody, I would make it like a quarter uh, measurement for it to have a little bit of uh, of freedom, as it were, to 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 move uh, and uh, on this guide thing, and uh, it's uniformly thick all the way around. And you also have to account for humidity. Because this wood is a living thing, even after it's uh, left the lumber mill, so it'll it'll expand and shrink with humidity, and uh, so that's why you leave your wood floors in your house for a week before you put them down. So 85, 85 and a quarter door. So now I can go home and build a door in my shop instead of trying to do it here, and because uh, they're so mean to me here. <laughs> and uh, don't leave you don't. Don't do this. So, uh, let's see. All right, so I can leave everything here. I've got everything I need on CamBot here for measuring. And uh, I wanted to show you this too. So let me let me show her this thing. Okay, so that's going to wrap up this segment. And I am going to have to find wood somewhere here. And, and stabilize that board. That board's going to be pivotal in the support, of course, of this this rail. So we'll uh, we'll do that one of these days. There's one right there. So that means there'll be one right there. Sometimes you can find nail pops if you're lucky. This place is a little new. Uh, there's a nail pop right there. So anyway, all right. Well, I got to get some more hardware for that. I get some longer screws. I got some two and a half inch screws I'll bring. How many do you think? I think four will be plenty. So that means you gotta bring six. This is like dream pretty through here. I'm going to get lumber for the door. Just unbelievable.
find yourself in a tight spot sometimes. They only have eight of these one by four by eights. So that means I gotta go to 12s. And I'll have to biscuit joint, butt joint, biscuit joint these. So it's basically 90, because I'm four short times four, which is like a circle of 360 uh, inches divided by 144, which are these. And you end up with 2.5, so I need to get three of these, and I'll have a little bit of scrap and make up for curve cuts and whatnot. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. When you come to Lowe's in, in Daphne, you have to a lot for who's gonna talk to you for how long about the truck. So everybody, everybody loves Daphne. But I got a little bonus today. This guy's gonna come up and talk to me, I'm sure. And uh, the bonus is, I was going through the parking lot, don't tell anybody this, but I've got this sign. Let's see what it says. Ooh, no overnight parking. I like that. <laughs> we'll put that up somewhere in the barn. Shh. So I was talking to somebody today, telling them what I was going to do, and they said, well, don't haul the trailer with you. You don't need to be hauling that big dumb thing around. I got those 12 foot sticks and it's a whole lot better than having it there. So, uh, just, I tell y'all what to do. Y'all don't tell me what to do. So in case this blows off, I want to show the officer that I did, I did have that on there. I do not think that, I want you to see the back of the truck. I do not think that, uh, I'm going to get stopped or anything, but just in case, well, I decided to get me a new circular saw. I got a pretty new one. This is what it sounds like when you close noise alert the door here. So I've got a Craftsman one, but I just dislike it. It's just already wobbly. It can't have what, 15 minutes of runtime on it or something. And so I just decided to splurge on this thing. And uh, there's that lamp. Let's see, I got a. Where did I put them bolts? I put them somewhere. Where do I put them things? Well, we'll find them. Okay, I might have to uh, make this a two-parter. I don't know. I think I will because it's going to take so long to build this door. And I want to be detailed about it. So, all right, well, in that case, give me a thumbs up. And uh, be sure to like it and subscribe. And we will actually get to this later. Uh, so, that would probably be better. Take some stress off of me not thinking that the video is too long. Can't stand guys that just blabber on and on and on and on and on.